I know many of us this week received our uh, Long Box Heroes collection. Finally, uh, the second wave finally came out. And um, this wave includes some of the great figures you see in front of you. Um, and a lot of these were characters that, you know, I'd only glanced at or seen in comic book stores. I'm kind of a lifelong DC Comics fan. Had a couple of Marvel comics that I liked when I was a kid. I loved Spider-Man a lot and, you know, thrived on reading G.I. Joe and Star Wars back in the day. But... Um, did not know or read the adventures of a lot of these, a lot of these other characters, but I, I do love and appreciate the design and style that we were able to get um, from Toy Otter. And again, as I said in the last video, um, regarding the Rocketeer related figures, Toy Otter has long been a friend of the superpowers community and, you know, really, really kept interest in that line going over the years with finding a lot of unproduced items. And yeah, I think you can even see you know, him talking on the uh, original Superpowers DVD. There's a special feature with him talking about the line and um, uh, where it originated and some of the history behind it. And love that he is you know, still involved and making figures that are using kind of the same design style to this day, which is this 4.5 inch figure scale um, and has you know articulation at the knees and um, at the arms and at the legs. And that is kind of that great pioneer design by the Superpowers Collection, designed pioneer by the Superpowers Collection. So these figures are extremely compatible and they're a ton of fun. And we get a lot of great body types and differences with these characters. So uh, I think I mentioned in my last video that one of the things I found out this week, you know, I knew the heads were interchangeable, that you can pull off each of these heads and change them. What I did not know is that the arms and legs are also swappable. So you can gently remove the arms and the legs. Uh, again, you cannot remove them at the knee um, and the knee does have a joint. It's allowed to swivel, but you cannot remove it, but you can swap limbs. So that is very, very cool. If for those of you who are customizing and it's pretty interesting, if you look in the back here at uh, Madman and Grendel, you start to, I think a lot of us are starting to think, wow, this is pretty close to, uh, if you ever wanted a Spider-Man in your superpowers line, that black costume Spidey is pretty darn close. If you're able to get that body, that head, and maybe figure out something else with um, some different arms, you'd be pretty close to a Spider-Man custom. So it's cool that you can mix and match elements from each of these figures. So I'm gonna start with the one character that I know and that I knew really well, and this was uh, The Tick. And I did not read the comics about The Tick. I did see it in the comic shop back in the day, uh, did not know much about him, but I did see the series and loved what Patrick Warburton brought to the line. So Patrick Warburton, who would have been you know, it's funny because I just did a video on Shazam and uh, that was, I also uploaded today and I didn't mention this in that video, but you know, Patrick Warburton, uh, who also played the tick, uh, would have been the ultimate Shazam back in the day. I think it was even in like wizard fan casting back in the day that he would have been Shazam. And that just makes so much sense. If he was still young, when they finally got to a Shazam movie, there's no doubt he would have been that character. Um, even as kind of the, the look and uh, the squint that CC Beck pioneered, but he also famously played The Tick, and it's a really, really funny series. Um, hopefully there's nothing too offensive in there. I don't remember much about it other than I laughed when I watched it when I was a lot younger. And um, But look at the body, just great all the way around. Uh, this figure is a very solid, thick, sturdy figure. Um, love the musculature, the detail of this character, and um, it's, kind of a, it's kind of fun when you fit him in with your superpowers characters. And I'll show a comparison here in a minute. Actually, let's do that right now. So here's a quick comparison. And again, one's on a stand, one isn't, but you can see this compared to this RB Customs uh, Shazam. You get a really, really nice overall. Let's pop him off the stand. You get a really, really nice, and the tick is big. He's gonna be bigger than Shazam and Superman, but you get a very, very nice uh, um, uh, inline figure here that fits in very, very nicely with the superpowers line. So. Love the tick. And some of these characters I had seen, some honestly I had not over the years. So I had to, now the nice thing about this line, and someone actually complained about this with one of my videos last week, and to, to fair complaint, I don't do a lot of packaging. I don't do any packaging on these. I'm not really that skilled, and uh, I really can't take a lot of time to shoot these. So it's not something I really integrated into how I do reviews, but um, it might, might have been helpful in this case because uh, the packaging on the Long Box Heroes is great. And a lot of care has been taken to write a biography for each of the characters. And quite honestly, that was pretty helpful for me because there were some characters that I just didn't know. So um, I believe this is um, 
Cassie Hack. And again, not exactly sure what line she's from. And I know we're looking at this and going, wow, this could be the makings of a really great, really great Harley Quinn figure if we wanted. Um, great design with this. Has the awesome uh, skirt that comes with it. Uh, nice sort of uh, female form that you can use the base for a lot of other figures as well. Um, comes with a bat. And again, I know a lot of us are going, huh, Harley Quinn. Love the Argyle socks. That's a very cool addition. And as I said earlier, I said in the, the previous um, review for the Rocketeer figures, love the stand that you get with these. The stand is a very cool feature and honestly wish McFarlane would do this with the Superpowers line. Great paint app uh, and great detail here. Again, follows the posability of the rest of the line. Then you get Mr. Monster, a very thick figure. Uh, comes with two guns, two sort of purplish guns. And you can get kind of a complete view of the figure here. And the only downside, again, I love these really thick bodies and just how um, well designed they are and how even they are. And you can stand them down. You can stand them without a stand. Sit them down without a stand. You know they're going to sit there and not fall over. Now watch, so I say that he's going to fall over, but no, he didn't. He, they're very, very well designed. Uh, the only thing that I saw right up front on mine is his head seemed a little bit loose, but honestly, I pulled it back out and popped it back in and it seems to... Uh, be just right. So it might have just been a little bit loose. Um, very good. Like I, I was saying earlier that sometimes it takes a long time to really get quality control down, but for the most part, they've done a great job with these figures. They just see, are so well produced overall. Um, this is Airboy. And again, didn't know much about this character over the years, uh, but love the design here. Uh, you know, details on the mask or on the, uh, the goggles, comes with a sword. Uh, there are some useful things here that, again, if you don't love this character, you might be able to use it on um, another figure. This is the goon, and again, didn't know much about the goon. Uh, very sort of a Popeye-esque appearance, for lack of a better term. And the goon comes with a couple of weapons. He comes with um, the axe that you see here. He comes with a pipe, and he comes with um, a wrench. And this is starting to remind me very much of a clue game. But... Um, has this sort of green leg design, these sort of short, stubby, but thick legs, massive arms and a massive torso. So, and love the face. Um, it's interesting because I don't know that he has eye detail. I don't think he does. He doesn't have eye detail. He does have this sort of growling uh, mouth here, which is very, very cool and makes it look very menacing. Uh, so love the look, the design of this figure. And then Grendel was probably the only one that I knew anything about. I'd seen Grendel over the years, but hadn't really read anything. But I knew Matt Wagner had designed it and had always loved some of the stuff that Matt Wagner had done with Batman over the years. So, um, again, if you look at this straight on, you think, huh, Spider-Man, the black costume, pre-Venom. Um, yeah, close to that, honestly. And it does have some cool elements with it. He has this weapon here, this sort of staff, this double-bladed double, um, double -bladed staff that he comes with. And he has sort of this... Um, tie off sash that hangs off the mask here that can just be plugged into the back, which is very cool as well. And then um, finally you get Madman. And again, a character I didn't know a ton about, probably seen some comics with him in it over the years or just my shelf in the comic store. Madman, very, very cool uh, design here. Kind of gives you that Joker-esque sort of feel. And, you know, again, you're just sort of one or two steps removed from saying, wow, if I don't love this character straight up, um, I could easily customize something very, very cool out of this incredible body. But um, this looks very true to, you know, the designs they have on the package from the comics. And you get this really, really cool sort of flowing hair. Um, uh, the great sort of almost, you know, exclamation point thunderbolt um, on the chest. And very, very nice articulation overall. So again... Um, this, I don't know if this is the first and only wave that Toy Otter is going to be doing. Um, I've really enjoyed it so far. I've enjoyed getting to know and like each of these characters and just think it's a very strong line overall. Um, liked, like I said, that the bio on the back of each of these things really makes a big difference. If you don't know these characters, you'll get to know them a little bit more just off the bio. And I remember back in the day in the late nineties when they re-released Star Wars with Kenner. And again, the figures looked horrible at the time, but one thing I really liked was on the back they had a very in-depth bio of each character. And even though I knew Star Wars inside and out, there was a lot of really great nuggets of information you were able to pull from that. And I feel like Toy Otter, assuming he did the work on that, 
has taken that time and care to be able to give you a more fully formed understanding of each character. So, um, you know, I'm going to give you a link to Big Bad Toy Store. I believe you can still purchase these there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'll try to link to the uh, to that page um, so you can get that you can get them as a set of seven, I believe. And again, oh yeah, there are I think four other characters coming out that are repaints of some of these as well. There is a tick in disguise who is wearing a, uh, a a tie, has the same tick costume, which I think is a slightly lighter color, but that's awesome and funny. So uh, I believe mine will be showing up next week. Didn't review that here, but uh, feel free to go out and get your long box heroes while they last, because I don't believe these are coming back after this wave is done, at least this particular group of characters. So thanks a lot. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Thank you.